Imagine the worst possible way you can handle a trade. Imagine a player having a great season where he wins accolades, and then you publicly announce that the player was not good enough and that it was time for a change, and then you wind up not even trading him. Imagine alienating everyone possible in the process. But that's exactly what the Detroit Lions did back in 1976 with the handling of quarterback Greg Landry. This might be the most botched trade in the history of the NFL. In 1968, the Detroit Lions spent their first round pick on quarterback Greg Landry out of Massachusetts. In his first season as the full-time starter in 1971, he made it to the Pro Bowl. Injuries kept him on the sidelines for a few years in his career, but in 1976 at the age of 30, he came back in style. He threw for 17 touchdowns, which was the sixth most in the league. He finished inside the top 10 in passing yards. He had a passer rating of 89.6, which ranked fourth in the league. And if we're going with some advanced analytics here, in adjusted yards per pass attempt, he was the third best quarterback in football. With all these stats, he was named the comeback player of the year in 1976. But the Lions didn't do too much in the win-loss column. They went 6-8, having their fourth consecutive season without a winning record, and they missed out on the postseason for the sixth consecutive year. In the eyes of owner William Clay Ford, changes needed to be made if the Lions were going to make a playoff push. The way he went about this, though, was about the worst way imaginable. At the end of the 1976 season, Ford said that Greg Landry is now on the trading block. He was putting one of the best quarterbacks and the comeback player of the year on the block, openly stating, I think we need to change a quarterback, and I'd rather go down with my guns blazing. Not sure I agree with that, but if you're going to make a statement like that about your starting quarterback, make sure that you're on the same page with your coach and that you can actually trade him. Ford, though, said that he wouldn't meet with head coach Tommy Hudspeth until a week later, so who knows whether or not they'd even be on the same page with the quarterback situation. But Ford was very adamant about Landry being traded and Hudspeth moving on from him, saying if he doesn't see it my way, I'll probably go elsewhere. As long as I own the team and get the raps for losing, we might as well lose my way. So how did this saga end? How did the Lions enter the 1977 season? To start off the 1977 season, Tommy Hudspeth was still the team's head coach, and Greg Landry was still the team's starting quarterback. How is that even possible? Landry played with the Lions until 1978, when he was finally traded to the Colts for a fourth and a fifth round pick. Hudspeth was fired after the 1977 season. But entering 1977, as Ford said he wanted Landry gone and wanted a coach who would be on the same page as him, nothing changed whatsoever. And I guess Ford got his wish about losing his way, as the Lions won just one playoff game the rest of his life. The lesson here is simple. Don't announce that your team's starting quarterback is on the trading block if you haven't met with your coach yet, and you aren't able to trade him. That just seems like basic trade negotiation in the NFL. But in 1976, apparently the Lions thought otherwise. <laughs>